All right, good evening. Happy Monday. Hopefully this finds you having enjoyed a fabulous 4th of July. Maybe you were, you were able to have a little time off, time of relaxation, maybe some fun with family or friends, and you're just ready now to dig into the Word. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll do just that. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for how good you are to us and how blessed we are. Lord, we are surrounded, Lord, by people who love us, Father, through your church. And, Lord, we find encouragement and support, Lord, through the family that you've given us. And, and we're just grateful, Father. Thank you for how good you are. And, Lord, when we get discouraged or when we begin to feel alone, as the enemy would have us to believe, Lord, may we be reminded of the many, Lord, that you have placed into our lives. And, Lord, how, um, Lord, we are to encourage and build up and and to love one another. Lord, I'm just so grateful for your church. And so, Father, Lord, as we look into your word, uh, Lord, we're going to be talking about your church. And so, Father, we need your spirit to give us wisdom and insight. So bless this time that we may, uh, Lord, see uh, clearly and know of your goodness, God, and how you are even in the most difficult of circumstances. Would you just bless us, Father? And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, my topic for tonight is Simon of Serene and his sons, Alexander and Rufus. Okay, so when Randall told me this, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's kind of a hard topic simply because there's so little to share. Even it's funny um, from when I began looking through the word to, to find things in relation to these guys, I, I could only find that which Randall had already shared with us through Sunday morning Bible study and worship service. And so, um, again, I get, began to pray, Lord, you just need to give me some insight. Lord, help me to kind of think through this. I, I want to be able to share something um, beyond what we've already heard, you know, that could be a blessing. And, and so as God always does, he is good and faithful to to just allow us to, to gain uh, from his word when we are doing it, seeking to gain. Uh, and, and so anyway, God is good. So I'll start with Mark chapter 15, verse 21, which is where my topic specifically comes from. The scripture, uh, one of the scripture references that we were in yesterday. And so it says, a passerby named Simon, who was from Serene, was coming in from the countryside just then. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus's cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now, again, I'm, I'm speaking to all of you even in my prayer, you know, as if you're a part of our family. As far as when I say our family, I mean the east side family. The reality is there could be some who are watching this and, and not engaged in our community. Maybe, hopefully, they're part of the family of God. Uh, so part of our family, but maybe not specifically Eastside. So if you're not up to speed with where I'm referencing, then uh, I encourage you, you can look back. We have a wealth of videos from, well, date back for now, I guess a year and a half or more, um, where we were walking through scripture uh, week by week, day by day, just about. I think we, we post videos every day except for Saturdays and uh, just take going through these scriptures. And so there's so much good that you can look to. But here, where we are today, here we are, um, we are at the crucifixion of Jesus. And so Jesus is carrying his cross on the his way um, to be crucified. And and so we see this man, Simon, uh, the Syrian, uh, Syrian. <laughs> we see him passing by. Or, and so, I don't, I don't think it'd be a Syrian when they'd be from Syria. Serene. <laughs> we know this is not my strong statement. The point is, um, I just want you to understand what's happening. He then is called upon to carry the cross of Jesus. Now, why this was necessary? Well, again, according to scriptures that we've already read, uh, Jesus had been beaten um, almost to the point of death. Um, obviously, he was in a very weakened state. Um, he was ha um, harmed from head to toe uh, as a result of all that he had suffered at the hands of um, others thus far since his trial. And so, um, so he still had a ways to go. And I imagine this cross would have been very weighty to be able to hold a man. Um, and so, so 
this is why we see Simon being pulled into it. Okay, so a couple things. And again, we know, uh, if you know me, you know uh, geography, I'm clueless. And so he's from Serene. Uh, this was a Greek city located in northern Africa uh, in eastern Libya. And so um, for those of you who are familiar with geography, that's probably, there's probably a lot of things just to gain from that. But here's what I found uh, that, that was interesting. One is that history tells us, not biblical history, but history itself tells us that uh, there was a Jewish community, a large Jewish population in Serene because of, um, of a ruler, and I couldn't say his name, so I won't even attempt that, <laughs> during the years of 323 to 285 B.C., and so many Jews had been um, uh, forced, Judean Jews had been forced to go and uh, live, to make their home there. So that was interesting. Um, but later, after Christ, uh, there was actually, a, it became an early center for Christianity, which I think is really cool. And we're going to touch on that uh, as I look at these next few scriptures. So... In the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 13, Randall, again, he shared this with us yesterday, but Paul writes uh, to the Romans, he's, or in Romans, he says, Greet Rufus, uh, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. So we believe, again, history tells us that this Rufus referenced here was one of the sons of Simon, whom is mentioned being present during Jesus' crucifixion. And then later, listen to this, in Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 20, we read that, well, I guess I said that wrong. I said later. So this wouldn't be later time-wise, timeline-wise. Uh, but um, this would have been, in other words, later for in reference to the crucifixion, not later, in reference to um, <laughs> to Rufus being greeted in Rome by Paul. So this was the establishing of the church. So after um, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and the establishment of the church, uh, before <laughs> we see Rufus in a leadership role uh, to the Roman believers. Okay, so Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 20 Listen to what it says. It says, Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Serene began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. Okay, now, I know I kind of just went all over the place with that but but I do have a point <laughs> so this is what I think is kind of cool is so we see here a man being made I don't know where that came from okay that was weird <laughs> but we see a man uh, being made to carry the cross of Jesus um, we don't know if he was Jewish or not but we do know again according to history, that Judean Jews were forced to settle in Serene. So again, it doesn't matter whether he was Jew or not. What we know is he was forced to carry Jesus' cross, So, and his sons were present. It's safe to assume that in his carrying of the cross that um, he would have been interested you know, and what was going on, you know, he would have wanted, have wanted, if he didn't already know what was happening in relation to Jesus, no doubt it would have sparked interest, and he no doubt would have followed along. Again, he may have been full aware, aware right? He may have been there for some time now, um, and, and so all I know is that based on that experience, and then what we later see uh, in reference to Rufus 
and of course scripture uh, when when i read the writings of paul to uh, to the church in rome he referenced not just rufus but he said um also his dear mother who has been a mother to me so his mother so that would be simon's wife had um been very good to paul she had mothered paul so um i think that it is safe for us to assume that as a result of Simon's encounter with Jesus, as a result of his experience on that day, and maybe in the days to come, that Simon came to know Christ as his Lord and Savior. And as a result of him coming to know Christ as his Lord and Savior, that his wife also came to Christ, and that then his children also came to Christ. It's, it's not uncommon. We see it throughout Scripture. And history, again, tells us, not just biblical history, but history itself tells us that when the man of a household comes to Christ, that often, more often than not, now obviously it's not 100% because simply we have free will, uh, but more often than not, we see the wife and then the children come to Christ as well. So anyway, powerful, amazing. But what I I was um, just kind of thinking about and and again as I went through these scriptures and I was praying Lord you know again what is there to gain from this outside of what we know and I couldn't help but think about how sometimes (laughs) maybe oftentimes things happen in our lives that are outside of our control things we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves I can't imagine being that person that was pulled out of the crowd one made to bear the cross of Christ Um, to carry this man's cross Um, you know sometimes things happen that's out of our power and um, not of our choosing but listen to this but regardless of whether again he was just pulled out and told to do this or whether he volunteered to do it, it none of that matters what matters is that he came to know Christ as Lord and Savior his family came to know Christ as Lord and Savior. Again, we see here, um, again, two things I want to point out, and and I'll, I'll start with Acts, which I should have started with last time, and, and that's where we see these believers um, going, believers from Serene going and preaching to the Gentiles. I think that's incredible. Uh, and so now, again, totally not important but just for me I wondered I thought well maybe they weren't Jewish um, because uh, had they been Gentiles that came to faith I think they probably would have had a, a greater fire greater passion for those that were Gentile uh, Gentile to, to share the gospel but it, not to say because there were obviously Jews that uh, you know went to the Gentiles but anyway I, I thought it was kind of cool so we see um, these people from Serene, and, and, and I think, again, it's probably safe to, uh, to assume that uh, Simon, Rufus, Alexander, you know, any of these men may have been a part of that group from Serene that went and preached the gospel to, um, to the Gentiles. But then also, again, now we see later, moving on down the road, the Christians in Rome, and in, in seeing these Christians, uh, Paul is saying to greet Rufus. And so that causes us, again, once again, to assume that Rufus would have been in very good standing, high standing, as far as within the church and ministry there uh, for Paul to have called him out to greet, you know, to purpose to greet him. And again, also acknowledge his mother and her mothering of him. So I just think that uh, this is such a great picture of how God takes horrible, horrible, horrible things in our lives and can bring about eternal, amazing things. And so as believers, you and I, we need to be careful not to discount God. I I saw a message today. um, The heading was, uh, do you believe God is in control? And of course I'm like, yeah. But then instantly his spirit in me said, well, then why? do you doubt then why do you fear then why do you question Uh, why are you ever worried 
Because if I really believed God was in control, I wouldn't doubt, I wouldn't fear, I wouldn't question, and I wouldn't worry. Um, so again, what well, I do, I mean, in, in sincerity, I do in this moment, but in the next moment when things go haywire, when, when I'm forced to do something very uncomfortable, very unpleasant, when I see things that I should not be seeing, the cruelty, the insanity um, of this world, you know, that's where those questions and those doubts and those fears and all of those insecurities and worries come in if I'm not guarded. I've got to guard my heart. I've got to guard my mind. Scripture teaches us this clearly, and, and it's because if I'm not careful, I can miss the fact that God is going to do something amazing, amazing. He is able to bring beauty from those ashes. He is able to take what the enemy meant for evil and work it for good. Don't we know that church? Don't we know that family? Yes, yes, God is good. And he has done incredible things. He continues to do incredible things. So let's not doubt. Let's not fear. Let's not worry. Let's not woe is me, but rather let's rejoice in knowing that our God is in control. And if he requires something such as this that he required of Simon, of us, that he will give us the strength, the ability to, to carry it through to completion and, and, and that he'll bring beautiful things out of it. That's incredible. Isn't that good? Isn't that good stuff? So all, for all my <laughs> uh, scrambling and uh, stammering, um, you know, there's just so much good, good in the Word of God. So my prayer for you, my family, is that you'll be in his Word, that you'll be in fellowship, don't miss the fellowship. We've been separated for far too long. We need to be together. We need to love on one another. We need to encourage one another. Again, we've got a big family, uh, so purpose to make yourself a part of that family. Purpose. Call, call your brothers. Call your sisters. Text your brothers and sisters. You know, get together. Talk. Communicate. Build one another up. And, uh, you know, God's going to be glorified through that, and we'll be encouraged. So I, I just love you all. I'm so thankful for this time and just want to pray for us tonight. Father, again, thank you for your word, which is sweet, 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 and, and just gives us so much, so much goodness. And so, Father, I just pray, Lord, that just as I have been blessed, that my brothers and sisters will be blessed. Lord, that they will be encouraged by these great truths, that they'll be challenged, Father, by the reality of these truths, Father, what it means for us today and what you're able to do. Lord, I'm looking at generations impacted for eternity uh, because of this experience on this day, this encounter that Simon had with Jesus. And, and so, Father, thank you. Lord, bless us, Lord, tonight. Lord, may we all find good rest and may we wake up, Lord, refreshed and ready to get out and to love everybody with your love oh god and, and we'll be careful father to praise you for how you work in and through even those darkest of days in jesus name amen all right guys love you all i would show you buddy but you know what he's not in here with me he's with his daddy <laughs> so y'all have a good night and i will see you all later bye guys